Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we will be reacting to the season finale of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. It has been a long, long journey. We are at the 23rd episode of the season, and hopefully this ends up being the best episode of the season. Now, it's going to be pretty tough because there were a lot of banger episodes throughout this season. We had Sukuna versus the Mondragora monster thing, whatever it's called. We had Toji versus Megumi, Toji versus Dagon, Toji versus versus Gojo. There were so many good moments and right here the last episode actually ended on a massive cliffhanger with Yuki confronting Ghetto. So Yuki is a character that we were very briefly introduced to during Ghetto's backstory and hopefully now we get to see what she's actually capable of because I feel like there's a reason why they didn't show us or tell us anything about her powers or what she could do until now. So without any further ado, if you guys are excited for the episode make sure to leave a like. While you're down there make sure to hit that subscribe button and lastly do not forget that there are a bunch of bonuses over on the Patreon. If you head on over and join the $2 tier then you get access to all of my uncut reactions including this series right here but with that all out of the way let's get into this episode here we are back at the crater the one that almost took out miwa okay yeah, this is what they talked about during the flashback. Is that thing hers? What was that? Detached from cursed energy. Optimizing cursed energy. Yeah, me neither. Me and you were on the same page, Itadori. Miguel. Dang, and it all comes back to Tengen. I haven't heard that name since, like, episode 3. Okay. Yeah, that just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> it's a world without humans, right? Like normal humans? Oh man. No. <laughs> He's being so vague. Seems like she knows. Mahito? Mm hmm. Oh no. Idol Transfiguration! Oh no. This isn't good. Long range activation of a technique. So is he using the Idol Transfiguration on all of them? Ah. So I guess we indirectly helped him. Hmm. Tsumiki Fushiguro. Is that his mom? Toji's wife? Um. That looks a lot like whatever the heck we saw on the floor back there. No. What? Okay. Lifted the seal on those cursed objects. Okay. 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 Okay.
What? What did he do to her? I mean, we know what she did, but... Like, what is this gonna look like? Dang, a thousand? Yeah, I'm sure he would if he could. <laughs> oh? Oh, they couldn't hold it for much longer. Poison! Ooh! Dang, okay, Choso? Learn something new every day. That's kind of cool. That can come in handy. Yeah, my man is just chilling. <laughs> He's like, I saved Miwa. I'm good. I did my part. The world of the future. Here they come. Dude, this is crazy because I always thought that the Shibuya incident was gonna be like the big incident that changed everything, which it kind of is. But it seems like the Shibuya incident is only the beginning of something even crazier that's about to come afterwards. Like, basically, I thought the Shibuya incident was gonna be the worst of it. Oh, the cube! Gojo! <laughs> It's beginning once again. The golden age of sorcery. Holy crap. So he's, he's referring to the period when Sukuna was on top, right? And I'm guessing the curses from back then were way more, like, chaotic and powerful. What the heck? Oh, that's Shibuya. That giant hole of nothingness. Oh yeah, you know the economy is going to plummet after that. I love how everybody is just like, except for the people in the offices, but all the normal people going about their day-to-day -day lives, they're just acting like it's no big deal. But I guess to them, do they just think it's a power outage? Mm hmm See, like I said. Like I said, man. Oh. I mean, at this point, what option do they have? People aren't going to take it seriously. Unless they tell them the truth. Is the hole growing? It is, it is. I didn't realize that before. I thought we just zoomed in closer to it, but I think it's spreading. Because right now the hole has reached all the way to the coast. Oh no, you gotta get out of there. That is not a good sign. Oh! Oh! It's... Oh no, it's wraps. It's wraps. Japan is doomed. Everybody better start swimming. But even then, there's probably like freaking aquatic curse spirits out there too. We're doomed. Oh! So have they not made an announcement yet? I, I guess they're still trying to figure out what to do. And these are like the cities that are closest to Shibuya that are being uh, affected first. Is this cursed spirit snacking on some cup noodles? Oh no, it's a person. This is not good. This may be free food for you, but you're gonna end up as free food for someone else if you don't get out of here. Is this a kid? This feels like a horror movie, dude. What is that? Is it really actually trying to warn them or is it trying to lure them? I think it's more of a lure. Yeah, what the heck, a hot bath? We're in a convenience store! She's already gone. 
Oh, no. Your teacher? Dude, why? This is so creepy! Oh, this poor little girl. And she's gone. Jesus! Oh, it was a lure! What the heck? Yeah! Utah! Utah? Already? Bro, I thought we weren't gonna see him until like next season! No way, dude! He got here just in time. The goat has arrived. Roughed up. Oh no, it's still alive. Uh, Yuta. Oh, someone else here? <laughs> oh, that was probably the... Okay, okay. Yeah, Rika. That's her name. She took care of it. I thought it was another sorcerer with him. That's so fire, dude! Yuta and Rika are back. What is this thing? What does it do? Oh, snap. Oh, snap! Oh, dude. Yuta came to reclaim his spot, dude. He was supposed to be the original MC. Whoa, 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 okay, hold on, hold on. It has been confirmed that Suguru Geto is still alive. The death penalty is hereby reiterated. Satoru Gojo is listed as a co-conspirator in the Shibuya incident. He will be permanently expelled from the realm of sorcery. Unsealing him will be cons- What? What was that? Why though? Maybe be- Ah, oh, dude, is it because of Itadori? Because I think Gojo vouched for Itadori to um, not be killed immediately when they first met him. So since Itadori is kind of responsible for what happened in Shibuya, are they blaming Gojo as well? Because they're basically thinking, like, if you didn't try to vouch for this kid and we could have gotten rid of him earlier, then uh, we wouldn't have to worry about any of this. Unsealing him will be considered a criminal act. Masamichi Yaga instigated Satoru Gojo and Suguru Geto in the Shibuya incident and is therefore sentenced to death. Whoa! The suspended execution of Yuji Itadori is cancelled. Now everybody's coming for his throat. The execution should be carried out promptly. Special grade sorcerer Yuta Okotsu will serve. As the executioner for Yuji Itadori's death penalty, dude. That is crazy. I'm glad to see that he's back in the picture, but I didn't think he was going to come back in this way. So he's the one in charge of killing Itadori. And what, what's everyone else doing now? Like, is Itadori on the run? Like the scars have started to heal? No way. Is this what I think it is? No, no, no. Oh, snap. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm guessing that... Whoa, wait, this is crazy. So Itadori's basically become like a wandering samurai that's just on the run. They're trying to hunt him down. They're trying to execute him. And I don't know what his objective is now necessarily, but it seemed like what he was doing there was like he clapped and the loud sound must have triggered some nearby uh, curses and then they jumped up and he's going to beat them down. But why would he intentionally lure them out? Is his goal to try to clean up this mess 
that he's sort of responsible for. And the question, if that is true, then the question is, why is he doing it? Is he doing it because he feels like it's the right thing to do? Or is he doing it because, you know, that's his way of kind of proving his innocent, his innocence and proving that he's not this monster that everybody thinks he is? Kind of atoning for what Sukuna did? I don't know, man, but this episode was great. And my question of the day for you guys is going to be, what are you guys' thoughts on the punishments that were dished out to everybody? Do you think they were fair or understandable, or do you think that they were a bit over the top and blown out of proportion over something that ultimately wasn't their fault? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But with that, I am going to head out. Thank you all so much for watching this far into the video, and I will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.